Hi, my name's Leo and I'm a boat builder and a sailor and I'm on a mission to rebuild and restore this 108 year old classic sailing yacht, Tally Ho. So far I've done a lot of disassembly, I've replaced the huge keel timber and we're starting the framing process right now. Now this is going to be a shorter video than normal because I'm just going to have a look at a couple of jigs that we've developed. I'm hoping that these will be interesting and maybe other people might find them useful to develop or build themselves for different applications. This is Kurt and Kurt's come up from California, he was here uh, last week. He's helping out with a lot of the bench tools and stuff and um, he's got a few cool ideas uh, about how we can speed up the frame production a bit. Yeah, so I've been watching Leo work a little bit and so we have some ideas of um, ways to speed up making the frames, like getting them flat. One of the things that takes quite a lot of time is planing one side of a rough sawn piece of live oak and before we can put it through the, the big plane of thickness so Kurt's had an idea for a, a jig that will allow anybody to do that process rather than me having to spend lots of time doing it by, by eye and by hand. The pieces of wood that Leo's got here are generally very big and very heavy. When a piece of wood's that big you can't run it through a tool like a joiner. You actually have to like set the piece of wood down and then run a tool over it. And typically the way we've seen that done is people using uh, router tables that are usually just like um, two rails and a router jig. It's like clamped up temporarily in place. But since we're doing such a huge volume here, we're actually thinking that we might want to use his uh, seven inch planer. It's uh, gonna be a more complex design. The other reason uh, I quite like the idea of the planer jig that you mentioned is that um, it'll allow us to gradually take the top off a piece. Using a router jig, you just have to set the level and then you're kind of committed to that level. Whereas with this jig, you can gradually take off the top until yeah, you've got enough you to put it through the Yeah, you can shave it down just like you table. would with like a, a planer or, or a jointer. You yeah, can just shave exactly. off like a tiny amount each time until and then see where you're at. So. Yeah. Yeah, so we built a, a three foot by 12 foot uh, table and tried to make it as rigid as we could so it'll stay flat. Then he'll be able to have one of his volunteers just throw a, a frame down here and flatten it. So we're using his big uh, seven inch planer. Basically, this is the carriage that slides uh, back and forth. We've made this jig that slides side to side and has a lift system so it can go up and down. Once one side's flat, then it's easy. We just throw it through the thicknesser. So we've been using this uh, jig now for a few days and um, it's actually working really well. Really fast and simple way of making one side of a piece of wood flat and that's what we need to do to be able to put it through the plane of thickness. And the great thing about this jig is that anybody can use it with a, you know five minutes or ten minutes of training. And the other great thing is that we're able to gradually take the thickness off with this. So. Uh, with a router jig, for instance, you have to commit to a certain depth of cut when you start. But with this, you can just gradually take slices off the top of the piece of wood. So this has pretty much been your idea and, and your design cut. Um, we've made a few modifications together, but how do you feel it came out? Seems to work pretty well, um, which I'm pleasantly surprised <laughs> by. Um, we had to sort of choose what way to go with this and I've seen a lot of uh, router jigs on YouTube but I've never seen a planer jig. It's a lot more complicated to do it with a planer. Um, for that we had to build this uh, lift system that can lower the planer down. Yeah but we threw some uh, melamine on all the contact points and then uh, Leo threw some what is it you threw on here? Just a little bit of grease. 
grease yep. right on the wood and the melamine. Yep. And uh, it seems to slide pretty well. It rests in these little notches here, and these little screws that we put into the planer. Yes. And then with the, um, the lift system, we did have originally um, a way to lock that system off. So another set of um, kind of thumb screws essentially, which would lock the lift system in place. But we eventually found that um, that was taking too much time up and the, the top screws were still vibrating loose. So um, we actually added nylock nuts to the main lift screws. Um, and then we were able to completely get rid of the locking screws. So that makes it a lot faster to um, adjust the height between passes. And we've planed already 10 or 15, 10 or 15 pieces of wood already. Yeah, Normally. some of them pretty big. And it's been used by people who have uh, very little experience woodworking. Do you feel that the results, are they as good or better than you were getting by hand? <laughs> of course, while I do it by hand, it's absolutely, <laughs> absolutely perfectly perfect. flat yeah, in every way. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> however, for some reason with this, they seem to fit together better. <laughs> You know, when you do it by hand, uh, to get it perfect does take quite a lot of time. So, you know, quite often you'll settle for good enough. Yeah. Um, with this, it's it's immediately going to be perfect as long as you've surfaced enough area to put it through the, the planar thickness. And the main thing for me is that I'm now able to hand this job on to anyone else who's here helping me out while I get on with other parts of the framing process. Yeah. Well, thanks, Kurt. Sure. That's awesome. Appreciate it. Yeah, anytime. <laughs>so it's now midnight but Kurt and I have just finished the um, assembly table so uh, this is going to be the table where we put the frames together and um, get them all in line and level and clamp them up, cut the butts, cuff the butts, um, mark them up and finally paint them and put the trunnels in and what I've been finding is that uh, I've been assembling the frames on the ship saw table and on trestles or saw horses uh, it's just hard to get them all completely level and um, that adds an extra layer of complication to putting the frames together. So I think this table is going to be really useful to make that process a little bit more accurate and more efficient.
Hi, Mom. So this table really is an incredibly simple thing to make and use but for something like this it just makes the process so much faster, easier and most importantly more accurate and efficient. I really recommend uh, building a table like this for any job really where you're going to have to join a lot of pieces together and have a lot of clamps um, and it doesn't quite work on a flat surface. Now one of the things which makes assembling frames a little bit tricky is that they have this bevel running along them. So they have an angle that changes from the top of the frame to the bottom and the template of the frame actually only fits in the middle of the frame between the pieces on either side. So what this means is once the frame is all assembled you can't actually check it that accurately with a template. So what we can do with a table like this is we can offer up the bottom half of the frame and put the template on top of it which is in its correct place. Then we can draw the marks on the table to show exactly where that frame should be to match the template because then of course we have to move one of the bottom pieces to paint the primer paint on the butt joint but we can put it back to exactly where it was according to the marks and then we can assemble the top pieces on top as well and they just match up with the bottom pieces and that's another reason why having a table like this makes it so much easier to assemble frames you can see here these are the two latest frames we've assembled this pair of frames is station 10, port and starboard. And these are built from southern live oak and the frames are fastened together with black locust trenels. Um, black locust is a very durable American hardwood and trenels are basically dowels that you drive through the pieces and then wedge them on either end. Now these frames are not glued together, this is just a paint. And the reason for that is I fully expect these frames to move. The timber's fairly green which means it's got a lot of moisture in it and there's not that many glues for a start which are going to effectively glue together green wood. And green timber as it dries out it shrinks, it moves around a bit and so I do expect here and there to have gaps in between the futtocks of the frame and that's not an issue at all. But what it does mean is if I glued these together the glue in those areas would fail. The strength of the wood as it shrinks and pulls apart or moves is basically too much for any glue joint. So either it would break the glue or it would break the wood around the glue and that would leave an area for water to get in and if there's any fresh water on the inside of the boat, for instance if the decks are leaking at some point and it runs down the frames, then that could go in between the frames and then cause rot. So this method allows the wood to move in the way that it wants and needs to move and if it does open up and if it does allow fresh water in, the rot inhibiting primer is going to stop that having any negative effect. And the bottom of the frames and the frame pockets and the keel will be painted with that as well when the frames are put in for the final time. If any of you haven't met her yet, this is Pancho and uh, she likes to hang around and be involved in the work. Sometimes that means destroying things I've just made, but um, she gets away with it. You want to see the frames? Okay. Don't hurt them. Alright, well that's it for now, so thanks a lot for watching and a massive thank you to everyone who's donated or otherwise supported the Tally Ho project. Uh, it makes a huge difference and it means I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time when we're going to be getting these frames and a few others into the boat, doing a final fit and getting everything in position so it's perfectly aligned. Alright, cheers!